Hello everyone. I am Satish Kade, Assistant Professor of AI and DS Department of the AI SSMS IOIT Pune. Today I am going to explain security in cloud computing. The topic is Cloud Identity and Access Management, that is IAM. Now, IAM typically follows the PARC model. Identity and Access Management is perhaps the most crucial element of cloud security. IAM ensures that only authorized entities have access to the cloud resources and everyone else in denied access. The access control policy typically follows the PARC model. Uh, what is the meaning of P? The principles means user, group, programs these are called as the p and a indicates action that means create read update and delete r is the resources that is os operating system networks the different different networks so there files etc c is the conditions time of the delay and type of os etc means this diagram shows us the actions and conditions and what is in the, the principle and what, is, what are the resources. Now we will see the IMA challenges in the cloud. Following some of the challenges of establishing a robust IMA in the cloud. IMA challenges in the cloud, the first is defined by the user, enforced by the provider. Second one is rapid challenges, challenge, varied resources and fourth one is the complex now what is mean by defined by the users and enforced by the provider unlike the traditional data centers the iam policies are defined by the users but enforced by the cloud service provider it is a joint responsibility that defined iam policies are honored and users who are new to the cloud may not fully aware of how the policies need to be defined and how are they evaluated. Understanding the IMA policies as applicable to the particular cloud service provider and environments is necessary to define the correct policy that is defined by the user or enforced by the provider. Now, the second one is rapid change. Rapid change means the cloud resources can be brought up within second and brought down quickly as well to manage the temporary peaks and down in the demand. With the rapid change of resources, it could be hard to set an access policy quickly. You may require authentications to set the policy as soon as the resources are brought up. And third one is the varied resources. Not all cloud resources have the common mechanism to define policies. Some resources use identity based policies, whereas some use the resources based policies. You must know which policy to apply to which the resources and how additionally you must also manage the IAM for the resources you own internally in your organizations. The user for both internal and external resources could be the same and you must properly apply IAM policy so that the user get the minimum level of access required to complete their respective job. Then the last one is the complex policy. Cloud-based IAM policy could be difficult to understand and write correctly. Each cloud provider has its own way of defining IAM policies. If you are using multiple cloud provider, it could be further complex to understand the policies and how they interplay. And these, these are the challenges in IAM challenges in the cloud. 
then we will see the identity management life cycle how it works typically identity how the following life cycle this life cycle provisions then enroll then end title use deactivate and deprovisions in this first one is the provision provision means what provision is the mechanism of creating an identity and this could be when an employee join the organizations or join a new project or role within the same organizations typically the administrator have the privilege of creating an identity as desired following the process establishing within the organizations now what is meant by the enroll once the identity is created it is enrolled in the system where it is designated for use for example you can enroll and the employee identity for using with the cloud service provider the enrollment process could be manual or automated this is happen in the enroll process now the third is end title what happen in end title after the identity is enrolled on the system it is assign role and permissions within the system the entitlement is based on the job to be performed by that identity and you should be careful in this step to ensure that the identity is not over permissive and is only allowed the access that is actually required for the job to be done this will be happen in the end title now the use during the useful lifetime of the identity it is used as per the entitlement assigns to it sometimes the entitlement might require update if the nature of job changes during the lifetime of the identity then the fifth one is deactivate once an identity has reached the end of the useful lifetime it is first deactivated on the system and it is not immediately deleted because the identity may hold the cryptographic key or other important information associated with it and that might be required in the near future in the inactive state the identity cannot perform any new functions but can return the previous informations owned by it then the last one is the deep provisions finally the identity is deleted once it is confirmed that it is not more required this step might also require deleting the informations that was associated with the identity during the lifetime or the information be transferred to some other identity for future detections this is the identity management life cycle thank you